The first major content update from my game, Doodling's Arcade Sports Ball, is now available. This update includes new maps, a new game mode, Steam achievements, and a whole lot more. You can check it out with the link below. This week we saw the restructuring of Humble Games, but what does that actually mean? Plus, we have new releases from Proton Experimental, Chimera OS, and Bazite. We'll discuss. What does iFixit have in store for us Steam Deck fans? And I asked you what the best controllers to use with the Steam Deck are, and the results of this poll actually shocked me. All of this and more in today's Linux gaming news. Let's get into it. Our lead story is pretty sad. Humble Games has shut down. This is yet another publisher of indie titles biting the dust in a sea of change in the games industry. Humble Games' closure was made public by several now former employees announcing that they had all lost their jobs and there was nobody left at the company. This was followed several hours later, I might add, by the official Humble Games Twitter account publishing some softly worded, jargon-laden, AI-sounding slop about how the label was restructuring itself. Quote, in these challenging economic times for indie game publishing, Humble Games has made the difficult but necessary decision to restructure our operations. This decision was not made lightly. It involved much deliberation and careful thought, with the goal of ensuring the stability and support of our developers and ongoing projects. Additionally, the restructuring of operations at Humble Games will have no impact on operations at Humble Bundle. We are acutely aware of the profound impact this decision has on our team members at Humble Games and deeply empathize with everyone affected. Our team's contributions have been world-class and invaluable, supporting the launch of our games since we started publishing in 2017. We are committed to navigating this transition with as much empathy and understanding as possible. Uh, supporting our development partners and assisting former team members remains our top priority. We are committed to making this transition as smooth as possible for everyone involved. Thank you for your support and compassion during this challenging period. It is deeply appreciated. They've actually published quite a few games. Um, it's just unfortunate that Humble Games is basically going out of business. I, I don't know other any other way. Y you fire your entire staff and call it restructuring. Uh, I don't know if that was like a AI slop blunder or if it was, um, you know, their <laughs> part of the prompt that they handed to ChatGPT when they said, write a Twitter post about restructuring Humble Games. It's like, come on, give me a break. This is not restructuring. Uh, they've basically handed off all of the operations of Humble Games to a third party uh, consulting group, outsourcing for the sake of outsourcing, it, it, it's disgusting to me. I mean, Monaco 2 is one of their upcoming games and it's like, that's gonna be a hit. Monaco was one of my favorite games the year it came out. Uh, so I just don't understand why they would do something like this except to save money or whatever. It's just ridiculous. Now, it's important to note that Humble Games and Humble Bundle are separate entities within the Ziff Davis slash IGN brand. The, the fact is that this wasn't like a Humble Games decision, right? This wasn't the people running the day-to-day -day operations at Humble Games. This came from the top down, along with the fact that, uh, you know, Ziff Davis just bought uh, a bunch of other like tech and gaming news outlets like uh, RPF, Rock Paper Shotgun. And I just find this kind of consolidation corporatism to be disgusting. All right, next up, let's talk about Chimera OS. Now, this is a big update for Chimera OS, it's version 46. It has a bunch of improvements, and uh, if you're not familiar, Chimera OS is pretty neat. But as a quick overview, it's a Linux distribution that's designed for one thing, and that's gaming. I don't think it's an overstatement to say that Chimera OS has been so influential that they uh, inspired Valve to rebase SteamOS from Debian to Arch Linux. So what's new here in Chimera OS? Well, first is their new input plumber system. This is basically a completely free and open source alternative to Steam input, and it's integrated into Open Gamepad UI, which is like a management front end for uh, Linux gaming systems. I mean, like I said, it works like uh, uh, Steam input and allows you to Frankenstein multiple input devices into a single virtual input device. Pretty nifty stuff. Now, Chimera OS has had this killer feature, uh, remote management system. Basically, you can access and manage your Chimera install from another machine on your local network, and uh, you can install packages and what have you. But they've added a feature that lets you launch any game on your system remotely. That's pretty cool. 
They've also added emulation content sharing where the OS can host ROM files and more, like art and stuff. Uh, and this will be neat for people who aren't interested in setting up something like RetroNAS. Now, along with these more notable inclusions are upgraded drivers for ANEO, GPD, 1X Player, and the Orange Pi Neo devices. There's full TDP control for AMD 8000 series devices and for the Steam Deck now. In fact, they also have full support for the Orange Pi Neo, which is pretty cool to see. Check out the release notes with the link in the description. Also, Bazite Linux version 3.6 has a new release out with surprising support for the ROG Ally X. Now this is a big deal since the Ally X isn't even on the market yet and Linux support tends to arrive after the device ships to the public. So how did this happen? Well, YouTuber and friend of the channel, Span the Deck, has early access to the Ally X and he started testing and reporting to the Bazite team. This means that they've got everything ready for the release of the Ally X from day zero. And that's pretty neat to see. Uh, Fan the Deck is actually in Doodlings now uh, alongside NerdNest. So if you guys want to hear uh, Bill or Rich announcing the games, you can check that out. Uh, otherwise, Bazite 3.6 includes improved support for the original Ally, but also for the Lenovo Legion Go, uh, as well as improved hardware support across various handheld devices. All right, Proton Experimental just had a major new update that made a whole bunch of games playable and fixes a bunch more. In this release, we saw Onimusha Warlords, we saw Planet of the Apes, Last Frontier, Sleeping Dogs Definitive Edition, Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, King of Fighters, and many others become playable. Then we saw many game-specific fixes. For example, the font rendering in Insanely Twisted Shadow Planet was fixed. Uh, they fixed Burnout Paradise Remastered crashing when a video input device is plugged in. They fixed Ubisoft Connect uh, requiring a manual login with Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon. Uh, and those are just a few of the big names. Uh, there are over 51 fixes and features in this new experimental release, and I think that's super exciting. Now, I want to know if any of your favorite games are on this list, either newly supported or recently fixed games. Leave me a comment and let me know, and while you're down there, make sure that you like that smash button. It's the best way to tell YouTube you want to see more videos just like this one. I usually upload a new video every Monday and Friday. Mondays are tutorial style or opinion content, and Fridays are more news oriented. So get subscribed so you don't miss my next video. And now let's get back into it. Now look, it's no secret that I love iFixit tools. Uh, they're well designed, they're durable, and they're high quality. I've had this kit since 2017 and I absolutely love it. Plus I love the mission and the mantra of iFixit. If you can't fix it, you don't own it. Repair is a critical right and something that's worth defending with every ounce of strength. So that's just one of the many reasons that I support their products. Now, they just recently released their Steam Deck Toolkit, and it's pretty exciting. This is specifically for the deck, and it includes everything that you need to open it up and service it. It includes a precision bit driver, along with three precision bits, including the PH0, PH1, and TR6 bits. Uh, it also includes a spudger, tweezers, it includes opening picks, an ESD safe brush, and precision cleaning brushes, as well as an anti-static wrist strap. Plus, it includes this carrying bag. Now again, I'm a big fan of iFixit, and you'll find a link to iFixit's Steam Deck Toolkit below, as well as affiliate links to some of their other products that I like and use. I especially love this one right here. I, I use this every single day. Now finally, I wanted to talk about the surprising results of the image poll that I posted here on YouTube on Wednesday. I asked, what's the best controller to use with the Steam Deck? And the answer was genuinely shocking to me. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not just you know spouting off hyperbole here. I thought for sure that the DualSense would win by a wide margin, but instead, the Xbox One slash Series controller topped the charts with nearly half of respondents choosing it over the other options. The DualSense was number two with 32% of the vote, the Steam controller came in third place with 17%, and the Switch Pro controller was dead last with only 5% of the total votes. I, I find this fascinating, and there were many respondents uh, in the comments who said, what about the 8 bit What about the Ghoulie Kit KK3? What about X, Y, and Z? And you're right, I mean, uh, there are tons of other options here. I wanted to keep this poll like first party controllers, so I'll probably end up doing another one with alternative options like the 8 bit Doe line, like the Ghoulie Kit, and some of the other ones that people were suggesting. Let me know down in the comments what you would like to see in a poll. 
because uh, I'm kind of curious to keep going with this. This seems really fun. Well, that's going to do it for today, but make sure you check out this video where I talk about the best controllers to use with the Steam Deck. You can also check out this one, which YouTube thinks you might enjoy as well. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.